Today I wanted to show you how to set up Time Machine uh, using a Windows Home Server. Um, that way you can use a, a network backup when you're when you're at your house. Um, now this is my computer. I've already configured it and it's already working. I just wanted to show you um, show you how it's working. So you know, if you just click Time Machine. Uh, it's actually mounting the volume, and you can see my time machines which I just set this up so I don't have much on here um, but this is actually pulling off of my Windows home server um, and since I've already done it on here I actually want to start with a, a, a new computer that doesn't have this configured yet so we'll come over here this is actually Sarah's MacBook and it's it's running Snow Leopard and um, there is you know a couple files that you're gonna need to download um, the one is a uh, little Apple script called Prepare for Time Machine, which I'll have a link to this on my website, so you can you can get that Apple script there. Um, you also need to enable um, Time Machine backups over the network. Um, there's a, a, a little installer that will enable you enable that for you. Um, you can also do it through the terminal. The for most users uh, using an application is is just easier, and I'll, and I'll have a link to that. Uh, I've already ran it previously because she had uh, my old setup that I use that no longer works on here. So she already has uh, uh, network support for Time Machine. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you have already had to have created a folder inside of Windows Home Server. Um, and I've already done that for her. So we just need to launch Finder and browse over to the server and you will see Sarah Mac Backup. Now this folder, um, while it's on the server and we can point Time Machine to it, it will fail. And uh, that's what we need to uh, fix right now. Um, so you can see as when I mounted that folder, it shows up on the desktop because I have, I have show uh, network volumes on the desktop. And uh, to prepare this folder for Time Machine so you don't get those errors anymore, you just drag and drop this on top of this Apple script. And uh, it's asking for a password, so let me just move away here real quick. And we can just OK this. This is basically just running the Linux commands um, uh, for the Apple script. And the Apple script, while it's running, you'll see it down in the dock. Once it's done, it'll uh, disappear. Uh, her computer's pretty fast, so it's already done everything it needs to do for the Apple script. Um, and that's really pretty easy, just, just drag and drop that, that network volume on top of the Apple script. And um, I said I'll have links for this on my website so you can in, read more about what the Apple script's actually doing. Um, but now that we have this created, it's still not going to work. We need to, uh, the sparse image that that file created, which is actually stored in your home directory. Um, this is the file that the Apple script just created. Um, so we actually need to place this inside of uh, the backup folder. And I just dragged it to the wrong place, but let's... So we'll put that uh, sparse image file, and that's just in your, in your home directory, into the backup folder that you created on the Windows Home Server. So this is 477 megs. It's going to take about a minute. I'm on wireless right now, so it's not... It is in, but it's not as fast as network. So once this finishes, you'll have everything you need to enable Time Machine Backup to the Sarah Mac Backup folder. And we'll just we'll just give it that minute, and then I'll we'll show you how it'll it'll run. And if you ever played around with this before, you'll know that it without running this Apple script and transferring up this sparse image, you'll get an error when you run backup. Uh, and it's the error is creating this sparse image. So basically, you just went around the error message. You're putting the sparse image on the network vol volume yourself. The Time Machine will see that sparse image. Try, it won't try to create another one, and then it'll proceed with the Time Machine backups. And it's not much longer here.
All right, it's finished. So now we can go up to the time machine and we'll just open up preferences. Uh, we will select the disk. You can see Sarah Mac back up there. And we'll just click use for backup. It's asking for her password. And now you can see that it's, uh, you know, 828 gigs available. And if you close this, it'll start the backup immediately. And you can see that it's spinning up there by the clock. And once this finishes, um, you'll be able to come back and use Time Machine. So it is it's proceeding now, and I say this is this will take a while. She has yeah 128 121 gigs over wireless, but as you can see, you're not getting that error message about the sparse image before. Like I said, we 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 bypass that, um, and once this finishes, it will work exactly like this and it'll all read off the Windows Home server. And I said for, to make it a little easier, um, we actually went into System Preferences and Login Items. And we actually, I actually added that backup folder in there as a login item, meaning that every time the computer boots up, it'll mount, that, uh, it'll mount the folder on there. And that way Time Machine will automatically work without you have to actually go to that folder and mount it on your desktop every time the computer starts up. So I say I'll have better directions on my website, um, but I just want to give you guys a, a little video how-to on, uh, on enabling that. Thank you.